So next question is when and how do you determine when to use Dextrose versus PRP? When do you decide to level it up or do you, how, when do you convince them to step it down a little bit? Good question. So here's how I think about these things. I am, uh, with very few exceptions, I am a believer in that if one injection is indicated, they're all indicated. There are uh, some teachings out there that, that oh, you know, uh, if this, this certain indication, uh, dextrose prolotherapy is not indicated, but PRP is. And at the extreme ends of disease, we need to take extreme measures to have an impact. So for example, someone with stage four tricompartment knee osteoarthritis who they need a knee replacement but will not have a knee replacement because they don't want to, I am uh, not going to say, okay, let's just do some prolotherapy because that's not going to be a strong enough treatment for what's going on. Could you? Yeah, I'm sure you probably could, but it would probably take you 30 to 40 treatments every four weeks to make a significant difference in that advanced stage disease. So the first thing I do with my patients is screen them and go through their physical exam and say, are you a candidate for a regenerative injection therapy? Are you a candidate for any of them? If the answer is yes, then there's several layers to the conversation. The first layer is efficacy. So there are certain things that do better with certain therapies when you factor in the cost. So as an example, if somebody came to me and they just have an ATFL and a CFL, you know, chronic ligament laxity injury, ligaments respond pretty damn well to prolotherapy, to dextrose. And in those cases where it is an isolated ligament injury, I don't think you, it's really worth the money to upgrade to PRP without at least trying prolotherapy first. And so that might be a situation where I say to a patient, hey, you know, you can do PRP, you can, they'll work, but I think you can save money by just let's try one to three prolotherapy treatments and let's see what changes we can make because ligaments respond really well to prolotherapy. Tendon tears, on the other hand, respond much better to PRP than uh, they do to prolotherapy. So if somebody's coming to me and they say, hey, I want prolotherapy for this partial uh, rotator cuff tear that I have and it's super spinatus, I'm probably gonna say, okay, we can do prolo, but for the added cost, I think you get a much greater percentage improvement with doing a, a biologic-based treatment like PRP. And so that might be a situation where I'd say, you should really uh, try to think about PRP. The times when I am uh, talking to patients about downgrading from stem cells is usually when their condition is not so severe. So that one kind of comes with clinical experience. So for example, if someone comes in and they've got uh, grade one osteoarthritis medial compartment of the knee, that's gonna respond pretty well to PRP, might even respond well to prolo. So everyone is at least appreciative of that, but some of that comes with uh, clinical experience and, and in part not being afraid to take less money to try and help somebody, which is, you know, when you're trying to run a business, it's sometimes a difficult thing to do, but it's the uh, the right thing to do. 